Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us for our Sunday morning service. It is great to be with you. It's great to be able to share the Word of God with you. And I know that you are going to be thoroughly blessed by the Word of God today. So stay tuned, stay locked into this channel, and I know that you will be blessed. Before we get into the Word of God, why don't we close our eyes, pray as we dedicate the service to the Lord. So, Father, it's into your presence that we come. We thank you, Lord, that as your word gets spoken, we know that you and your word are one. And therefore, Father God, you are present with us. You tell us in your word, where two or three are gathered in your name, that you are there. And so we welcome you into our presence now, Lord. We thank you that we have the privilege of coming before you, the privilege of being called your children. And as the word is spoken today, thank you, Father God, that the word falls onto the soil of our hearts ready to receive the word, that the word will produce a harvest in each and every one of our lives. I ask now, Spirit of God, speak through me. Deliver the word with boldness, with accuracy, dispelling all forms of confusion in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning, family, I want to read our foundational scripture to you. And these are words that Jesus spoke. And Jesus says in the book of John chapter 10 verse 27, He says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Jesus saying, My sheep hear my voice. The title of my message therefore is, Whose voice are you following? Whose voice are you following? Now there are many sermons that have been preached with this title, but today... I want to speak to you really about the voice of God. And so we live in an information era where information is readily available. All kinds of information you can get on all kinds of devices. Your smartphone, you can look at your laptop, you can search the internet, you can go and find information at any point in time. Information is not difficult to come by. But all information does not go through a God filter. That means not all information that comes at you is information that is wholesome. It's information that can build you up. Not all information that comes through to you is information that you can use in life. You know, anybody, if you've got an opinion about anything, you can go and you can share it amongst those who perhaps are following you on Facebook, you can have friends, you can have on Twitter, you can go and call upon thousands and thousands of people that can watch your video. If you simply have an opinion on anything, you are able to share it with a whole lot of people, depending on the size of the influence that you have, whether it be on social media or any other platform. Another popular social media platform is TikTok. TikTok, I was having a look at their top five followers. Number one is Charlie D'Amelio. She has 148.7 million followers on her TikTok account. The next is a sister, Dixie D'Amelio. She has 57.5 million. These are top earners of TikTok. These young people make a lot of money through their TikTok account because the, um, the amount of people that they influence. Addison Ray, 88.7 million followers. Bella Porch, she has got 92.4 million followers. Josh Richards makes a lot of money because he's got 26 million followers on TikTok. And these are the people that are influencing our young people. These are the people that our young generation is watching. And so it is very important that we understand as parents that these people are the people that are speaking into your kids' lives. These are the people that our children are following. You know, there's a quote that has been quoted by various people over the years. And the quote says, if you do not stand for something, you will fall for anything. And that is so true. And therefore, what we want to do is, as Christians, we want to make sure and pray that the people that are influencing our young people are people with substance, people that are God-fearing, 
that when they speak, you know, it carries weight and it carries influence. And therefore, they need to stand for something. You know, if someone stands for something and believes in something, they can speak with so much more conviction. And you know, friend, the truth of the matter is there is no one else that is more worthy of your life than Jesus Christ. Jesus has done so much for you and for me. He laid down his life on the cross so that you and I can be saved. And so it is the gospel that we can bet our life on. We can put all our chips on. It's on the gospel that will never change. The gospel will always remain the same. God himself said, my name, I put my word above my name. And if everything passes, the word of God will not pass. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 to 26, then the Bible says, then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone could come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. And so Jesus here is calling for us to follow him, to, for us to take up our cross and to follow him. It is the message of Jesus that is important that we share with others, even if it makes us unpopular. Now think about how you can spread the gospel if you like Cristiano Ronaldo, if you have got a hundred and uh, 1,500 million followers, if you are able to have that amount of followers and you make a stand for Jesus, you say something about the goodness of God, you are immediately reaching that amount of people. You know, if you had the following, for example, on TikTok, like Charlie D'Amelio, that has got 148.7 million followers. Imagine if you've got that amount of followers and in your broadcast, you are exalting, making name, great the name of Jesus. Immediately, you are then influencing that amount of people for Jesus. And so Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. In Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it's, Paul says here, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. And these words spoken by Paul gives us of the heart of Paul. Paul has laid down his life for the gospel. You know, there are many times in Paul's life that he was imprisoned. Many times that Paul was beaten for the gospel's sake. Even stoned because he was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so Paul was convinced about this message that he carried in his heart. That is the message of Jesus. And so to you and I need to be fully persuaded and convinced that the gospel is the only way to God. It is the only way through which man can be saved. You know, we're living in a time and in an era where we have many voices that speak to us. At the same time, everyone wants a piece of our attention. Everyone wants us to do or give them something. And so we've got all these different voices shouting and at us coming from all different directions. And we need to ask God to give us a spirit of discernment to listen to the right voice. You know, amongst all the noise, there is the voice of the Holy Spirit. He's a gentle voice that speaks to us. And we need to just, like the Bible says, be still and know that He is God. Because He is the only truth that you and I can believe. You know, everything else, the devil is the father of lies. We know him to be un able to. He is not able to. He's incapable. That's the word I'm looking for. He's incapable of telling the truth. You know, Jesus one day in addressing the Pharisees in John chapter 8 verse 34, Jesus says these words. He says, you are your father. You are like your father, the devil. 
and the desires of your father you want to do. He, the devil, was a murderer from the beginning. He does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. When he, the devil, speaks, he lies. He speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. The devil is a liar. He is not capable of speaking the truth. And so when voices speak to you that are telling you that you are not worthy, that there are voices that speak to you that tell you that you've got no purpose in life, voices that comes and tells you that you are worthless, my friend, you need to know that those voices are coming straight from the pit of hell. They're coming from the devil and he known as the father of lies. You see, voices, the voices that you listen to will shape you. The voices that you listen to will influence your thinking. And so ultimately you are what you are listening to. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs 23, 7, a familiar portion of scripture, it says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so easy. As a man thinketh in his heart, so easy. And so don't think that you can listen to stuff, you can entertain stuff, you can indulge in certain things and not be influenced by it. You can innocently listen to a song that speaks and that lyrics is all about death and destruction or suicide or whatever the case may be. And there are many, many songs like that out there. There are many, many songs and our young people would say, but it's just music. It's just a song. The thing is, whatever goes into your ears will drop into your heart. And the Bible says what a man thinketh in his heart so easy. And so we need to be careful what we listen to and what we let into our heart. You know, last week I spoke about six things that we need to stay true to. And we need to stay true to the one of the things is we need to stay true to the Bible. We need to stay true to the teachings of the Bible. If it's not in the Bible, you are not obligated to believe it. I don't care who preaches the message, but if there isn't a scripture to back up the claim, you do not have to believe it. Because sometimes we as preachers, we will preach from the Word of God, which is mostly what we preach from, but sometimes we have an opinion through study of the Word of God. We come to certain opinions or come to certain conclusions, and we will deliver that. And what I would do often in our messages, when I do have an opinion to share on anything, I would say to our congregation, this is my opinion. And so when it is from the Word of God, it always has to be backed up by Scripture. You know, in 1 Timothy 6, um, Timothy, or Paul writes to Timothy rather, and he says this in verse 3 of chapter 6. If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accords with godliness, he is puffed up with conceit and understand nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words which produces envy, dissension, slander, evil, and suspicion. And so we need to preach and stick to the Word of God. Paul also writes in 2 Timothy 4 verse 3, I'm reading from the Amplified translation here, it says, For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instructions that challenges them with God's truth, but wanting to have ears tickling or tickled with something pleasing. They will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another, chosen to satisfy their own desires and support the error of their hold. And so they will have what the Bible also called itchy ears. You want to hear things that are soothing 
to your hearing, soothing to your conscience. And the Bible speaks about this. We, in the last days, many, of, many people will crave that type of teaching. All they want to hear is feel-good messages. They don't like to hear messages that challenges them or brings instruction or correction or discipline. But no, I want to hear motivational talks that will really encourage me. And as much as the Bible is filled with that type of doctrine and that type of speak, we need to speak the full counsel of God, the uncompromised word of God. When Jesus spoke in our opening scripture in John 10, 27, and he was speaking about eternal life, as I was saying, he was confirming that he is the good shepherd, that he is the true shepherd, the only one through whom one can be saved. The only way to heaven is through Jesus. There is no other way to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Have a look at John chapter 10, verse 1 to 5. Jesus speaks. He says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is as a thief, as a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, the sheep hears his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follows him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow the stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of a stranger. And so whose voice are you listening to? We need to listen to the voice of Jesus. In order to know his voice, we need to spend time with him. And so family, today, my challenge to you is that we spend time with God, that we get to know him. So when he speaks, we know that it is God speaking to us. And so today, I want to encourage you to spend time with the Lord. I trust that you were blessed by the service. I trust that you were encouraged by the service. And even though there are many voices that may be shouting at you today, friend, the only voice that you can trust is the voice of God. Well, God bless you. Have an awesome Sunday. But before I go, I want to do what I always do. And that is to give an opportunity for those who have not accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. To simply pray a sinner's prayer. Pray this prayer after me that will then bring you into right standing with God. It's the beginning of a journey that you walk with God. So close your eyes and pray this prayer after me. Say, Father God, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. Today, I acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross to take away my sins. And after three days, he rose again. Today, I choose to put my faith, my trust, and my hope in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting me into your family. Amen. Now, friend, if you prayed that prayer, I want to congratulate you. And I want to say to you, what a great decision that you have made. If you ever want to join us for an in-person service, we're out in Kailami in the suburbs called Barbecue Downs. We hold our services from the Pinnacle Waterfall College, and that is in 11 Candigan Avenue in Barbecue Downs, Kalami Midran. If you're ever in the area on a Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, pop in. We would love to meet with you. Well, God bless you, and have an awesome week further. Until we speak next time, God bless.